Hey, I appreciate you cruising by for my daily devotions, March 27th, 2024. And it, we're going to look at Revelation 13, Luke chapter 2, Psalm 85, and Ruth chapter 3. First chapter of Luke, we rest, read that yesterday. And uh, the angel shows up and tells Mary, you are going to be pregnant, you know, and the son that you're going to have will be called the son of the most high, okay? And uh, he'll sit on the throne of his father, David, and he'll reign over the house of Jacob forever. Okay, in verse 34, Mary says this, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. The Holy One to be born will be called the son of God. Wow. The, you know, the, his father, the father of Jesus was God. He overpowered Mary with the Holy Spirit. The father was God miraculously. Mary was a virgin and she was a virgin until after Jesus was born. So his father was God, okay? His mother was Mary, a woman. Guess what that makes Jesus? Totally unique, 100% God, 100% man. The only 200% guy ever in the history of the world. That's who Jesus was. That's essential. That is absolutely essential Christian doctrine. Anyone who comes up with less than that, it is contorted and wrong. That's who Jesus was. That's critical to understand. He's the son of God and the son of man. He calls himself both throughout the gospels because he's 100% God and 100% man. Wow, wow, unbelievable. And he is unique and the savior of the world, the only way to get back into a relationship with God and be restored. The only way off this planet alive, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today in, in your word. Make us different because we heard from you. And I pray that you'd address our lives with power, grace, and authority. Make us different, Father. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 13 and start there. Revelation chapter 13. Hope my new glasses get here. Maybe I'll be able to read with them. That'd be nice. Okay, Revelation chapter 13. And the dragons stood on the shore of the sea. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had 10 horns and seven heads with 10 crowns on his horns and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled the leopard, but he had, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. Men worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to ex exercise his authority for 42 months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to, con and to conquer them. And he was given authority over, over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And he performed great miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give the, the to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. 
He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast and the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, that let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is 666, the mark of the beast. And Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Probably need to preach through the book of Revelation sometime. I've done that once, but it was in the late 90s, I think. And it's not the late 90s anymore, is it? I'm not 50 years old anymore, am I? <laughs> okay. The birth of Jesus, second chapter of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the family line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were afraid. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you great, bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the, all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the, this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. She, The, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do what to do to him for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, so now you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Who did he see? Saw Jesus. Jesus is God's salvation, which you have prepared for in the sight of all the people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what, was, at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84 and never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were 
looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Every year the parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of, of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, and they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their friend, relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother asked him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He said, didn't you know that I would be in my father's house? But they did not understand that he was, what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Psalm 85. Let's get a little wisdom from the Psalms. Psalm 85. You showed favor to your, to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turn from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the, the God, to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, and let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. And then Ruth chapter 3. One day, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I, should I not try to find a home for you where you will be well provided for? Is not Boaz, with whose servant girls you have been, a kinsman of ours? Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourselves and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the, at, at the far end of the, of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man, and he turned and discovered the woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a kinsman redeemer. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than uh, than that which you showed earlier. You, you have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am near, I am near of kin, there is a kinsman redeemer nearer than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to redeem good, let him redeem. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized, and he said, don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, bring me the, sh the shawl you, were, you are wearing and hold it out. 
When she did so, she, he poured into it six measures of barley and put it, put it on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? She told her everything Boaz had done to her and added, He gave me these six measures of barley, saying, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. God is good and he has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us. Use your word to change our lives from the inside out to uh, conform to your will. Make us different because we heard from you today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.